Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Thanks for joining me today. It is our first day of Christmas in July and we are going to be doing some alternative colors and stamps for Christmas cards. Do you ever get tired of just making red and green Christmas cards? I certainly do. I know there's been you know that teal stuff that's going on in a couple years there was the black white and red thing that was going on I wanted to do something just a little bit different and show that you could use some of the stamps and colors that you have in your stash already that you don't have to really buy anything special to make gorgeous Christmas cards this particular stamp set that I'm using right now is from Sweet and Sassy Stamps and it is a teeny tiny little floral stamp set and it's a bunch of little floral images in it with leaves and stuff. And I have Real Red and Blushing Bride and Polish Pink I think which is one of the new in colors from Stampin' Up. And I have all of these colors and the greens there as well and I'm just going to create a background from these floral images in this color palette and then I'm going to put a Christmas sentiment on it and layer it uh, you know the 80s came back this year well the past couple of years a little bit but you know like mullets are back and that kind of thing in the 80s and 90s paper matting and layering a lot of papers were really popular so I figured why not bring that back too so <laughs> I've been practicing a little bit and I'm going to have a lot more of that throughout uh, Christmas in July as well as uh, in my regular card making too. So keep a lookout for some old school stuff getting thrown in there. I actually did a card the other day that had eyelets on it. I haven't used eyelets in years so that was a lot of fun. So I'm going to do some old school stuff. Use your stash uh, and kind of repurpose some stamps look at colors in a very different way because it can be Christmas no matter what it can still be Christmas we can take some floral stamps I'm going to show you another card at the end of this uh, that is a, a floral but because of how we're going to stamp it in the colors that we're going to use and the sentiment with it it becomes a Christmas card and it's a gorgeous Christmas card so look at your stamps in a very different way to see what you already have on hand and you can create unique and different and still very gorgeous Christmas cards and even a different color palette instead of doing pinks and reds and greens I'm still sticking with a pretty traditional color palette but by throwing that pink in there and the evergreen color which is that dark green that's on the right there at the top it's actually a really dark bluey green it's not a traditional evergreen color it's a really bluey green so it's a really different color palette um, from a traditional olivey green and a real red Christmassy green and I really enjoyed these cards I left my favorite card to the last uh, it's actually on the cover of the video and it is my favorite card. It is absolutely gorgeous and I will probably be making a lot of those for Christmas cards this year. It's my favorite one. So I just added stamps here and there. When you're creating a background like this, be sure that you stamp some of the images off of the edge of the paper. It gives it a more cohesive look. It actually makes the, pa the, the pattern look more completed than if all of the images were on the inside of that border of the paper. It, it's that visual stimulus that we get. It's part of that design element uh, and it's stamp off of the paper. Big tip, this is an after the fact, after the video thing be sure to wipe your mat off or at least put a piece of paper in under your stamping um, I stamped a lot of red on my black mat in my stamparatus when I was doing this and I ended up with red ink all over my next project so wipe your mat off or put a piece of paper under it one of the two I still haven't done my laminating and put my paper in there yet but that's that's okay um, I ended up wanting to put a little hearts in here because it's a little heart image in that stamp set so I pulled out just my 
block to fill in where I wanted this heart because I needed to repeat that same little image everywhere and then just wiped up really quickly and now we're going to uh, finish this off with a sentiment I'm gonna finish all of the cards at the end of the video we're gonna do all the stamping first and then I will do my cutting and matting and mounting on the card bases at the end of the video I'm gonna stamp this in the bottom right hand corner and this sentiment is from Concord and Ninth, I think. I have all of the products listed below in the description. Nope, that's actually from Sweet and Sassy Stamps as well. I have all of the products listen, listed below in the description as well as over on my blog. And I'll have uh, instructions on how I did everything over on my blog too. Next up, I'm going to use the same stamp set, but I'm going to use the Gina K wreath builder with it, and I'm going to create a wreath for a square card. And I am this is sped up at three times because doing a wreath builder with a really small stamp set does take a little bit of time. It truly does take a little bit of time. So I'm actually going to speed this up a little bit more because I did a big old wreath. I just wanted you to be aware that it's going to get a lot faster from here. So for a wreath builder, it's that square in the middle there and you literally just do a, a, a turn. You just turn the paper and fit it into the corners and stamp and fit it into the corners and stamp and fit it into the corners and stamp. And if you do a larger piece than the than what fits in the inside of it, then you just make sure that you put the paper in the same corner all the, you know, in the right corner all the time. And I love this wreath builder. I love it. I love it. It's so much fun. I don't use it often, but I love it. I love how it, it turns out. So I literally just kept adding stamps and just kept adding the different colors to it. There is one thing about this card that I would change when I finished with it. I used a rose gold embossing powder that I thought was opaque and it turns out that it wasn't it was translucent I would choose a different embossing powder I would make sure that it was opaque instead of translucent the one that I used was the rose quartz embossing powder by Ranger and I probably should have used the rose gold one that I have by Lawn Fawn that is uh, opaque but I didn't pull that one out I pulled the rose quartz out because the color match was better for what I was doing um, but you it ends up that you really can't see the bottom part of my sentiment and that's one thing that I would change and sometimes when you are crafting and you make a card you find that out at the end and that's fine if I make this card in the future, then I, I can change that. If I want to make that card, make this card again, I can change that. Um, but I still wanted you to see the card, even though that's something that I would change about this card. Sorry, my big old head gets in the way. I'm trying to make sure that my stamp is in the correct place that I want it there. And it doesn't matter where you start the stamp, because I don't know if you've noticed or not. I actually have put this started the stamp in several different places here. And I'm just adding one more. Now the video is going to slow down a little bit here so you can see um, a little bit more of how this is the last one. I think the last little image that I'm doing on here for this particular uh, wreath. And I'm just going to stamp this. This is the darkest evergreen color and it just added that little hint of blue there. And that's all done. I'm going to clean that up and wipe it off. And that itty bitty teeny tiny stamp itsy bitsy little stamp I don't know if I added another one in here or not yep I did I added one more little leaf in there I think or maybe it's another little flower I don't know I just kept adding to it it was so pretty I just kept adding to it it's another little flower and I, I had so much fun I just didn't want to stop doing it but it goes really quickly I mean it overall it takes a lot of time to do 
uh, a wreath builder card when you're doing tiny little images and you want to be pretty intricate with it. Um, one thing is to use your magnet to hold the um, stencil in place uh, to make sure that it stays in the corner there because you don't want it to slide out as you're working. And make sure that your paper is in the correct place that it needs to be as you're working around. But I'm amazed also at how different all of the colors look using different stamps. I think that is so fun and so interesting as when you're crafting, you find that you have uh, the, same, the same color palette, but it looks really different depending on what stamps you use. That has always been something that uh, it fascinates me and it keeps me crafting every day to see how I can utilize that color in a very different way. So here's that rose quartz and I'm using a, the, a sentiment from that same stamp set from Sweet and Sassy Stamps and like I said it'll be linked below in the in the description and over on the blog. Pull out that coffee filter, sprinkle on that embossing powder and I think this at, at this point right here is when I realized that it was not going to be opaque. And I went crap. So anyway, it is what it is at this point. It's still pretty. It's still a beautiful card. I just would have liked for it to be opaque instead of translucent. But that's okay. And clean everything up. And then we're going to move on to our next card. Our next card is going to be the florals that actually, see here's our two panels. We're going to finish those at the end of the video. We're going to turn these into a Christmas card. So I'm actually going to do the outline in black and then the flowers themselves are going to be done in the reds and the pinks and of course the, flower, the, the leaves are going to be done in the greens. Very traditional colors kind of, not traditional shapes of Christmas flowers. They are not poinsettias, poinsettias, or as my mother says, poinsettias. Um, I have to tell a story about poinsettias now. So, and I may have told this last Christmas, if you didn't watch it, if you've heard this before, I'm sorry. So there's this string of poinsettia lights that has been going around my family for years and years and we forgot where they were and I found them in my basement last year. But they've been this huge joke, running joke in my family because they are ugly. They are horribly, horribly ugly. And we give them as a gag gift every year. And we did it for years. And it, I found them last year in the basement. I was the last one to get them. And I think I said, I, we're not doing this anymore. And, and I hid them because they were so ugly. I didn't, I, oh my goodness, those things are so ugly. They're gold poinsettia lights. And they have glitter all over them. And they are horrible, ugly lights. And we pass them around as a gag gift every year. Put them in a different box put them in all kinds of weird boxes, shoe boxes, you know, cool gift boxes, and then all of a sudden you open it and it's those stinking string lights and they are so ugly. But anyway, uh, I started with my lightest color and of course worked up my, working my way up to my darkest color here in all of the different layers of the flowers. The one thing that you have to remember when you're doing layers when you're doing stamps layer layered stamps like this is it doesn't have to be perfect i know we want it to be i know that it seems like it looks better if it's perfect but remember this is a handcrafted card this is handmade if who you're giving that card to looks at that and says oh you didn't stamp that perfect they don't ever need to get a card from you ever again just keep that in mind you're the only one that's ever going to see that imperfection. Nobody else will. And if they do, they don't ever need to get that card from you again. So just keep that in mind as you're crafting. So I stamped out the leaves and I did a really big contrast on these. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I loved this. So I'm going to stamp the centers of these flowers. And then we're going to die cut them out using our coordinating dies. And I'm going to do the sentiment in black cardstock with gold embossing powder. It is so striking and so pretty and so different. 
and this is a great way to get more use out of just regular everyday stamps that you have and turning them into Christmas stamps and cards. And now we're going to go ahead and die cut these out with the coordinating dies. And these are pretty easy to line up just like the stamps are. Altenew does a really great job with being able to line up stamps and giving guides for these um, stamps and for the, the coordinating dies and that kind of thing. So absolutely gorgeous. And as many stamp sets as uh, Altenew has for, you know, stamps and stamp layered stamps and florals and that kind of thing. Absolutely so easy to do. Uh, they have a bunch of guides and that kind of thing. I pulled out my magic mat again to give it a try uh, and having really good luck with it this time. And I don't know if it's just that I have a different cutting plate to use with it. I don't know. But it seems to be doing pretty good. So I'm going to pull out another sentiment here and I'm just going to use that plain old plain Jane Merry Christmas there. And like I said, I'm going to stamp this in uh, Versamark ink on some... Um, black card stock and I'm gonna do gold embossing powder I'm using Simon Says Stamp antique gold embossing powder it's not as bright it's a little bit brassy but not quite and it shines up really nice and I, I like it because it has a little bit more depth to it than just gold embossing powder uh, it, it's absolutely gorgeous I, I really do like that Pour that back into the container. Having coffee filters is probably one of my favorite things. I keep it in the container. I have a few that are in like bigger containers with spoons in them, um, but I tend to get that everywhere, so I decided not to go that route. Um, once I run out of what's in those little smaller, the, the little plastic containers with the snap lids on them, and I have to use a spoon and all that stuff, I still end up putting a coffee filter under it. So I'm just, I just leave them in the, the containers now and put, um, cough, just use the coffee filter. I, I don't do well with the ones that have like the little snap lids on them to change over. This is my favorite card and probably where I got red ink all over absolutely everything. So I used the Alta New watercolor abstract something or another stamp set and I literally just made my pattern paper pretty much out of it and I did all of the colors and I just stamped this out in these bold images and I think that's why I really liked it so much um, and I really like that the Stamparatus lid comes off that I can actually get over here and really clean these stamps off uh, without having to worry about whether or not I'm going to break the lid of my stamps and my, my stamping tool. So I'm going to put this on here and then I'm going to do this dark green one and then I'm going to put the smaller ones in here and I'm going to do the lighter green ones and the lighter pinks and oh my goodness I just love how this card turned out. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The part of the sentiment of this one got me actually doing the sentiment got cut off. So I am going the sentiment for this is a die cut Mary and it's a script scripty Mary from Concord and Ninth, I think, um, and I'm pretty sure, and um, I die cut that three times and stacked it up and glued it together, and my camera cut off, and I was like, really? Uh, but I stamped Christmas and gold heat embossed that on black cardstock and centered, centered that just a little bit lower than center on the card, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It is so pretty. Absolutely love that. This is my favorite card, and I'm probably going to send these out for Christmas this year. So here is the Mary for uh, the sentiment part. The Christmas is on that stamp set right there. And of course, like I said before, I'm going to have that linked below. I'm using the magic mat. And it's just, uh, 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 I don't know what it is about this card. It's just gorgeous. It's a little bit different. It's not over the top. It's just, it's just perfect. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I did not trim this panel down. Uh, this one I used and just put it straight down onto a top folding note card. And for the 
um, when the first card that we did I am going to trim that one down and mount that on green paper for the square card I'm going to actually double mat that one on pink and red paper and then for the flowers we're going to just do that straight to the front of a, of a note card and we're going to add some Nouveau drops along with it and that will finish off those cards absolutely I was a little bit leery honestly of doing this just because it was a little it's a little different for me because I'm pretty traditional in my Christmas cards I'm pretty traditional in the stamps and stuff that I use I stick pretty much to Christmas stuff and I was like you know what I want to use stuff that I have here I want to do something um, a little bit different and um, a little bit out of the box for me stretch what I already have and this was my first attempt at that and I was super duper pleased at the results of this and just having fun with it and thinking a little bit outside of the box so I encourage you to look through your stamp set and see what you have that it might be one of your favorite flower stamps and that you just absolutely love and your favorite colors and can you turn that into a Christmas themed um, card in some way absolutely you can add a Christmas sentiment to it and just make it pretty and it will be a Christmas card and it will be a beautiful Christmas card um, and of course if you sell don't celebrate Christmas and you have another holiday that you celebrate that time of the year it can be that kind of card for you or it can be a winter card it can be an encouragement card it can be any kind of card that you want it to be um, just think outside of the box a little bit it doesn't have to be for Christmas just think outside of the box a little bit about how you can utilize your stamps and or dies just a little bit differently than what you normally would see there's the card front over there on the left and it, my camera cut off on me but that's okay so um, when you have a really thick card base sometimes it doesn't want to lay flat for you for a while and I'll just take a couple pieces of washi tape and tape that bad boy down to my desk so it will lay flat I am going to glue all of this down flat and I'm going to pop up the sentiment with some foam tape and all of the flowers are going to be glued down flat the adhesive that I'm trying out here is the scrapbook.com adhesive I'm still thinking about it I'll let you know um it's it smells that's my biggest complaint about it right now it it smells so I'm, I'm not good with smelly things so we're gonna put this just directly to the front of the card here the glue action itself is pretty good it comes out really easy uh, I have no problems with that it adheres really well dries really quickly it can be used as a two-way glue but for me it smells some people might not smell it at all but it smells um, and then I'm just going to mat my panel there and I'm also going to mat this one in the, the dark green this is coordinating cardstock this is the everlasting evergreen I think it's called and we're going to mat those and then mount those on some top folding note cards and side folding note cards and that's going to be it tomorrow come back tomorrow because we're going to be looking at bold classic and crisp and I'll have an SVG file for you over on the blog as well and it's going to be for A2 and a slimline card and that's going to be available for my email subscribers so check that out it's a go two gorgeous cards and then on day after that we're going to have a bunch of cards and we're going to be using up our pattern paper stash because that's important because I know you have a ton of pattern paper I know you do and don't tell me you don't because I know you do pattern paper stash using it up buddy it's coming we're going to use all that Christmas paper up don't be scared here I have a little have a little tip for you if you don't want to use all of your pattern paper and you're scared to use it like I am because it's going to run out and you'll never ever find it again cut a little square of it and save it seriously one by one square and save it put it in a drawer put it in a little stash put it on a board put it in oh this paper was beautiful you'll always remember it and you'll always have it we're hoarders like that and it's okay it's Christmas in July y'all we're making Christmas cards thanks for joining me today y'all have an amazing day and I'll see y'all tomorrow